What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Table Talk. It's been uh, it's been a little while since we've done this, so um, we figured why not just hop on and and then just shoot for something. There's been a lot of stuff that uh, has released in the last, well, news wise, anyways. A lot of stuff has come out in the last few weeks. Uh, a lot of tournaments been going on. Some more coming up very shortly. So we're just gonna <clears throat> dive on in, and get to it. Uh, we were, well. Partially had streaming set up, and we were going to try to do that, but, you know, uh, Macs don't have great audio stuff, so uh, we couldn't get a lot of the back-end stuff figured out. But that's okay. We're, we're here. We're still going to do it. We're bringing it to you. Um, I think we're going to start off with a little, uh, is it tournament recap, or...? Or... Yeah, so uh, if you follow us on Instagram, we <laughs> had uh, teased Necron uh, list building uh, on Monday the 8th. Um, we're going to go live and then we didn't. So, uh, it's a <laughs> teaser for whenever this goes up on YouTube. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's something we want to talk about since, uh, June because I went to a, a one day, uh, Warhammer tournament, uh, three games, a thousand points, um, your normal three hour time limit, all the good stuff and ended up winning, uh, hey. running them up. Running an entire meme list. Uh, <laughs> it should not have won, but uh, the 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 Catan and the Star Gods were with me, so uh, I did well. Apparently, <laughs> that's fantastic. Was it just you that went, or did when did you go to? Just been. <clears throat> I, yeah, I don't know where I am yet. <laughs> yeah, it's like the only game that we haven't really touched in on yet. <laughs> yes, uh, but yeah, it was. <clears throat> um, uh, just me, uh, and, uh, a bunch of different play styles from all over. Um, uh, my games were up against, um, Chaos Space Brains and Adeptus Mechanicus as well as, uh, who was the last one? I think it was Nids. Well, yeah, it was Nids. Well, shoot, it's been like yeah. two months, so I don't blame you if you don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oops. <laughs> uh, yes, but it, it was uh, Swiss style. So it was uh, at the end of each round, you got so many points if you did if you won, so many points if you're within a certain bracket of VP at the end, and so many points if you drew, and then no points if you lost. And it's always just highest to highest, lowest to lowest. Mm. Uh, and uh, I ended up having uh, two major and one minor victory. Nice. Uh, which ended up netting me the most uh, tournament points at the end of the day. Were there any other undefeated people that were there too, or was it was it just you? Uh, I think I saw was undefeated. Nice. Hey. Heck yeah. Yeah. That's super awesome. Wow. So uh, <laughs> I, I was running Necrons because I'm a Necron boy. Uh, as you tell me, <laughs> my uh, I, I'm coming to you live <laughs> from within the Black Pyramid. Um, You're in a temple. Yes. Uh, but uh, I played Necrons the way you're not supposed to play Necrons. Uh, and uh it's how ended up working uh also i brought like a third of the forces i could normally bring at that point value because they sunk all my points into two big models well three big models really oh and then just use sub fillers just to soak up some chaff how, how many models total did you have uh total let's see that's uh 10 20 uh 11 12 13 uh about 18 uh and at that point volume was we were running 30 to 40. <laughs> that's uh no it narrows back down to about 30 again when you up to 2000 points because that's when you can like soak some points up in a big tank hmm. uh, i opted for the big model big models uh, at this point value which ended up uh making my i mean even against uh the chaos marines fielding um some warhounds, which are their smaller mechs, their smaller knights. Uh, I still I uh, had way fewer like activations than they did in the phase. Wow, that's pretty awesome. That's kind of like uh, for Middle Earth when we take. Oh gosh, when I took the Fellowship mixed with uh, uh, R- Riders of Rohan, I had I think mm-hmm. eight models in our first tournament, and everybody else had like thirty something or forty something models. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's normally the way we would play kind of Necrons. Um, changed a little bit in ninth edition, but in eighth, and then uh, it still is a strong meta going forward uh, into the current edition. Is uh, load up on warriors and immortals because they have the resurrection protocols, 
and they also have objective secured. So you can just set a basic infantry squad on an objective to take control of it. And even if they get shot into, if they're running blobs, you're getting a lot of those guys back at the end of the round anyway. Mm. Uh, instead, I opted to... my. I did bring some warriors, uh, but not enough to really constitute a blob, just their, their small setting of the squad at 10. Uh, but my main thing was I brought uh, the Catan Shard of the Void Dragon, which is a giant, big, uh, F-off space god. <laughs> uh, but it ended up working out really well my favorite, because his rules work specifically against vehicles. So, playing against Admech and a vehicle-heavy Chaos list. Mm. Uh, end up doing pretty well there. Uh, and a Catacomb Command Barge and a Triarch Stalker. Um... Those are the three models that actually did anything for me in the game. Uh, none of them ever went down. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, no. I think the Catacomb went down in the last match, my last match of the day. But uh, And uh, my main thing was not so much holding objectives as much as preventing my opponents from getting objectives and winning on secondaries. I mean, preventing from objectives <laughs> is just as nice as getting objectives. So Yeah, so uh, I ended up getting a, a tabling in the first game, so I ended up getting a, a max point game at the end of that one. Wow. Uh, uh, second game was against the Chaos Knights, and that was uh, one where they were almost tabled. Uh, they had one squad left in the back corner um, just because... Uh, uh, my target prioritization was great, so anything that can contend with my big hitters, I took out in the first round. Uh, I, I, this is a very alpha strike heavy list. I, uh, it was, <laughs> I, in order for anything, uh, things to go off, I had to alpha strike them before they could alpha strike me. Right. So, always deploying into cover, uh, out of line of sight, uh, or in some way just making things very silly and hard for them to get to make my big guys, and then using my um, some movement rules as well as just the fact that the, the Void Dragon is fast on the flyer. Mm. Uh, alpha striking and everything. Uh, and and usually at this point, by people are only bringing one <laughs> big thing and then they're bringing utility and line infantry. Uh, whereas I uh, brought a Vanguard detachment so I could just bring three big things and very, as minimum amount of line infantry as possible. Because <laughs> why not, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think... Uh... Yeah. If if the Shadow Collective doesn't work out for you in Legion, I think you'd really love playing Aiden Versio. Her her play mm. her play style is exactly basically what you just talked about. Is it's all about alpha striking and getting your one opportunity to just unload everything into somebody. Perfect. Yeah, uh, it's not my like actual normal play style, but it just it worked out well for me. Um, uh, Admech had a fire uh, in uh, round one shooting phase, took it out of the sky before I even getting into charges in melee. Wow. Uh, Chaos, uh, Chaos Knights ended up going down, killed all the Warhounds, uh, uh, killed uh, most of them first round. I got the rest of them on the charge. Uh, and then uh, Nids was just, it was also meme list, so it worked out for me in there. It was just mostly gaunts, <laughs> but uh, they worked out in sheer like dice volume, so they're throwing like 90 dice of shooting phase. Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. But, uh, then they can't pierce my armor and maybe things are gaining wounds and they just smack them back for, you know, uh, as many models as I can each round. <laughs> wow. Is this, uh, is this a list you'll play again if you do any other tournaments? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like the viability may be gone now that people know what to expect. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. Because uh, it's one of those things where it's, you know, the sheer, the sheer amount of surprise of what do you mean you're running Necrons and you're not running two 20 men blobs of warriors? Why are you not just the objective? Oh, why is everything dying? Because <laughs> <laughs> now they now they know that they need Alpha Strike me, so that may change things. Although the nice thing about the Void Dragon, uh, it can only take uh, three wounds per phase. So oh, you need to do damage in psychic, shooting, and melee. Uh, but if you're playing some of the factions of Spine, they don't have psychic phases. You know, you're already missing that and then you're gonna wound at the start of the next round. If I kill a vehicle, uh, I regain additional wounds. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so it, there is some nice Alpha Strike protection with him it. It, yeah, in particular, but um, uh, other than that, if they were to like, Alpha Strike my Triarch or my Catacomb at the start, that could that could hamper me yeah. uh, pretty drastically. 
Oh, that's pretty cool. Where was this tournament at? I didn't hear. Uh, this was an online tournament, so this is actually using TTS. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. I didn't know yep. that. I was wondering why... It is pretty cool. Is, uh, is three hours usual for a round, or is that just because it was an online thing? Uh, that's usual. That's what you'll find also with, like in person. Usually you'll see uh, three hours more so around like 2,000 points, but for the, the for the jank of TTS, yeah. you kind of allow that, but... The ours is the average length of a uh, 40k game. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> it's another reason why I'm kind of falling off into other gaming systems. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, which actually is a great little segue, uh, Warcry has got some pretty cool things that are coming out. Yeah. I just pulled up the information for the uh, Heart of Gur box. It's coming out. We're getting a new edition with a whole new starter set and a new setting. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to kind of go through the, the box and some of the news we got on it. Yeah, let's yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, okay. Because it's, uh, uh, so over... it's, it, oh, it's not a whole brand new edition, right? It's just kind of like a, a point it, five. It is a, as far as you know, it is their 2.0. Oh, okay. uh, but okay. it's enough in there that it almost feels a little weird to yeah. be a full 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought... Because uh, there was rumors before it came out that there were going to be armor saves added in. Yeah. Which wow. I was, like, actually excited about because I thought that would really? balance out some stuff. Yeah. Armor saves would have done a lot of it. IMO. But they are not added in, so it just looks like a giant stat rework, and that's about it. So I'm less excited than yeah. I was. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I didn't even that's stat rework and reactions. Uh, so, uh, yeah. The reactions are neat, but I, again, I'm, I'm less excited. But would armor saves really do a whole lot? I mean, other than just being able to add basically extra hit points on? I mean, because everybody's already got I don't know, anywhere from, depending on the model, you know, 10 to but 45 hit points. Like, for, what, armies like, for armies like Tim's, it would be, it'd be a big deal. Yeah, if running those things like Stormcast or Slaves of Darkness, where you might only be running five models, whereas the competitive average is anywhere between like 10 and 13. Right. Uh, you're already, uh, your, your, your health, your health advantage is already lost just based on the amount of numbers that they can throw at you. Uh, and not to mention the fact that you essentially have no, uh, objective, uh, no way to contest objectives. Well, so, yeah. especially with the strong cast, thing. cause you're so slow at moving that if you have an objective on the other yeah. side, you're never going to get there. Yeah. And so that's, but that's been one of the main, um, uh, critiques among the Warcry community is the fact that there are some armies which you know, it's, are more likely to get Warcry than others. Where the second you pull, you know, your last SNIO card, uh, you can look at the armies you have at the table and concede from there before even playing the game. <laughs> or you can decide to throw some dice if you want to. Yeah. Uh, but um, armor saves would have made it so we, if you had some of the, those bigger, tankier armies, uh, and uh, they would have had. Um, some additional sane power. So then, in theory, you could uh, try to contest an objective against three people with just one model, which then would allow you to actually effectively field like a five-model squad. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess that makes some sense. I, I think if they do that, it should only be specific factions or specific models that get armor saves and not just everybody, because then mm. I feel like at that point, it just becomes like all the other games where you're just throwing dice to be throwing dice, you know? Sure, yeah. Uh, and I definitely get that. I, I, I've, like, I've always liked our wound system a little bit more than the traditional wound system. Uh, but I, uh, either the big factions need to have a points reduction, and you can also pair that with like a hit point scaling down or something, just so you can feel more models, right. or uh, they're, they need to be uh, boosted up in speed or some killing that's added in or something. So if you, you, know, you get to the table and you do pull that fifth card and... You you have a way of strategizing your five models into your opponent's ten, mm. as opposed to just you know throwing some dice because you got nothing else to do for thirty minutes or at the table. Right. <laughs> Throw the dice. Yeah. I guess. Uh, uh, also, before we do any more, I totally forgot to say anything at the beginning of the episode, but we've got all four members here today. Uh, myself. Mm-hmm. We've got Tim. We've got Boone. <laughs> <laughs> we have to never introduce ourselves. Yeah, no. And and we have also got Derek. Yeah, we've we've got all four members of uh, the That's tabletop me. crew. So, yeah, carry on. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, we have 
uh, in the New Warfare box. Uh, 160 page softcover core book. Uh, loaded with art, lore, and all the rules. Um, which uh, they say it inc uh, including the new rules for the new edition. So that includes reactions and look like new game modes and campaigns. So Ooh. it looks like they might be reworking some of the um, three or more player game modes, mm. uh, which are some of my favorite ways to play Warcry. Um, reactions I am interested in because I think in terms of you know adding some level of resilience to uh, some of those um, armies that are, are smaller model counts, that would make a, a lot of sense just to give them yeah, some really strong reactions. I'm interested yeah. to see how they play out because just on the initial reading of some of the reactions, like a lot of them are like, you get to deal maybe two to three to four like damage back at them by yeah. reacting. So it doesn't seem like a huge deal, but I'm right. Well, we... to see. After we play a bit, I'm interested to see how much they impact things. Oh well, yeah, we so we play the three three of the tankiest armies in the game between the um uh used to be the vampire courts, uh but uh Boon, Boon's oh, wow. vampire skeletons. Uh, Soul Blight, uh, Soul Blight Seraphim, yeah, yeah. and and the uh, Dirk Griffin. I both play uh, with Stormcast. But if you're playing yeah, like, yeah. the other warbands or anything like that, uh, your average wound count is only going between like four and eight. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm used to running guys out with like thirty something health. Yeah, so uh, I think reactions if you if you do them well. And you know, if someone's running something, only have four wounds remaining, and they're going to punch into your big guy that they know they can't kill, but they're going to take enough damage and might kill them, that might be enough to, you know, deter them and give you some uh, resilience or some uh, uh, stat like staying uh, capability with those smaller model count armies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, uh, they're they're doing the core book as a soft cover, so. Uh, feel like that is just another way for GW to save some money because I believe even up to every box set up until this, including Kill Team and uh, Heresy, if it's been the big box, it's been hardback. Well, shoot, I mean, <laughs> uh, most rule books in all of their IPs are, are hardcovers because... So, it's kind of, so I mean, it's interesting. <laughs> Hopefully no one has any tears in their books before they get shipped, but I have heard stories about soft book covers and boxes just getting torn up by the sprues before oh they even arrive. Oh my gosh, jeez. Uh, this, uh, this one, you get the, the really cool like little measuring thing if you pre-order too, right? Is that That's with this box? Yeah, you get the the uh, golden measuring tool yeah. like what they have in Kill Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, measurements are still going to be the same uh, as before, it looks like, but they just have it there as a fun tool to move around terrain to make it a little easier as opposed to having finagle uh, measuring tape. Mm. Uh, this box set also includes uh, the 64-page software Warband Tomb, Rot and Rune, which has the rules, campaigns, and background information for the two warbands in the box. Um, all the other armies, the pre-existing warbands, already have their um, compendium released for free online, uh, which is actually super nice. So we we no longer need to buy four different compendiums to yeah. get every faction's rule yeah, set. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Free, free rules, yay. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've said this before. I said this on my reaction stream. Uh, it's not like... You know, if you had two other or three other major manufacturers who have already been doing that for the past five years or something. Right. It's almost going. I, I feel like it's a free rules in some way. It was more of a standard. Um, as yeah, it, as, more, it, as more it should on. be. Yeah, it should absolutely yeah. be. And especially when you get stuff that's just kind of a rehash or like maybe a slight change. They shouldn't make a brand new book for everybody to buy. Like, I, I mean, I get at the end of the day, it's a business and they've got to make their bottom line and everything. But man, you got to show a little bit of love to your player base. Mm hmm. That's a. Uh, uh, it's... Uh, we'll probably talk about it in a bit, but that's one reason why I was ex I actually ended up being more excited than I was initially about the new Lord of the Rings stuff is that they didn't release a brand new book. Yeah, was yeah, just... they just collected their errata. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In uh, the uh, new Warcry box, there's one new faction, right? There's two. There's two new. Oh, they're both uh, new. Oh, the, okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. There is the Rotmar Creed. Which are uh, the, uh, I believe they are, those ones are the Swamp Dwellers who are worshipping uh, the Swamp Father, which is uh, Nurgle, but not really Nurgle. <laughs> uh, 
and it's uh they're get, they, they do dive a little bit more into how the chaos gods actually like get willing converts uh in this because you know normally like i'm the god of rotten pestilence so that doesn't normally like sound like it has mass uh church appeal <laughs> you know but um yeah, but they uh, explained that, you know, he comes to them as, as the Swamp Father, the god of the swamp, essentially. Mm. And that's how he ends up uh, converting them. Uh, it also has the Horns of Hashut, uh, which are some Zinch worshippers. So we got some uh, moldy, swampy green boys and some feathery, moon purple boys. <laughs> <It's gorgeous. laughs> I think the, the Rotmar guys look pretty cool. I think I might, yeah. I, I might dabble in that a little bit. Or if they make new rules for, or work our rules for the new, um, oh crap. They just came out in Underworlds. They look kind of like a uh, Van Helsing style stuff. Oh uh, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, they got some, we got some Witch Hunters in, yeah. uh, in Underworlds again. Yeah. If they make some work our rules for them, I'm all over that. Yes. That, I think that's been some of the, the best looking models I've seen from, for Underworlds in a while. Oh, I'm yeah. super into those. Yeah. Uh, the Gur box also has uh, some Narwood scenery. Um, so we're actually in some new swamp terrain, and this is brand new terrain. It's not just a box, so this is kind of uh, interesting. So it looks like it has like some some bone style um, tree bridges and some other barricades and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if they're going to switch over to doing the the kill team barricade or the scatter terrain rules, where the, they're actually controlled by players, but they almost kind of have that same vibe. Mm. I also think that. it's interesting going go to uh, the swamps of Gur. We went to Gur in Age of Sigmar Third Edition. That was where like kind of the major uh, annual update went last year. Uh, but now we're actually getting uh, some more uh, world building that the the swampy sides of the realm, not just the uh, the plains of destruction. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the more we play anything Age of Sigmar more I realize that the world is, well, massive, but also they, they do a lot to, to try to do some world-building stuff, which is actually really cool. And they've yeah. got tons and tons of books, and yeah, it's cool. Also, that's the thing that I think that's what uh, why GW's been able to, to stick around as long as they are for as much as they price things. Yeah. Uh, is the fact that they do spend so much time investing in the world around it, so you can it's very easy to get attached to the characters and the lore. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, there's just a ton of books with 40k, and we're getting more books now with Age of Sigmar. Um, so you're already, and some people already have, like, their favorite characters in the Stormcast, or their favorite members of, uh, Nagash's court. Um, that, you know, they, that's, they like that character, so that's becomes their army, and then they just consume everything related to that, you know, part of the world. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. Which moves us along to another awesome batch of releases. I know uh, Boone's got a little bit of thoughts about some of this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Middle Earth had a stream dedicated only to Middle Earth. Uh, uh, what was that, yesterday on Sunday Sunday morning? Um, which a lot of people were super, super excited for. Uh, even if it was just an hour, which I think it was clocked in at just over an hour. Um, mm -hmm. that means that they're actually thinking about it, <laughs> which is, if, is more than you can say for, time, for like some ever, things. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they've ever really had streams for middle earth, which is mind blowing to me, but you know, we've got rings of powers coming out in, in just a, a month's time. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, to tag along, pretty soon. yeah, yeah. I think it's end of September, middle of September or something like that, but oh, I think it's, like the mm. beginning. it's like soon. Yeah. Um, but to, to tag along releases with that is, is well, the smartest thing they can do. I mean, Lord of the Rings is going to get popular again. It's just going to happen regardless of people's thoughts of the show now, which I haven't seen a lot of positive things and that's a whole nother Pandora's box. I don't understand that, but, um, yeah, we had an hour long stream, uh, where they released all kinds of goodies. A lot of it was kind of elf centered, which... I thought was going to happen, uh, given that the Rings of Power show is pretty much focusing on the elves, uh, both with Lothorian and Rivendell, so I kind of figured it would be pretty elf-heavy, but I guess a lot of people were disappointed with that. Um, but we got a new starter box coming, 
this one's centered Battle of Osgiliath. So we've got f- <clears throat> uh, three, four new models that are coming in this box alone. Um, yep. Faramir and five. his two ranger captains. Is it five? Oh, well, counting the, the foot and, and mounted, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. F- Faramir, Damrod, and Madril all getting brand new sculpts with um, yeah. removable terrain pieces. Or, I mean, I guess you can choose which one you want. Yeah, you can either yeah, do ruins yeah. or woods, which is phenomenal. I don't know why they haven't done this before, but Random it's such a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then also on the evil side, you got Gothmog, uh, brand new, first time in plastic sculpt. Um, he looks better. I think they still didn't do him justice, but he looks better. Uh, I know Boone absolutely adores the warg. It's like his favorite thing. He can't wait to get his hands on that. That's a freaking goof. <laughs> <laughs> he feels with the warg about the way I feel about Elrond's horse. It just looks like they just took a, uh, like a mega block knee and attached it. <laughs> it's so weird. It's, it's neat because it's different than a regular warg, but it's just so goofy. Yeah, I mean, maybe they wanted to make it bigger because Gothmog is just kind of a chonk himself. So, you know, yeah. with, with chonk comes it's chonk. Cool, so, but, like, it just looks weird. <laughs> what what did and you say? Like, it looked like a a knoll from World of Warcraft, kind of bent over yeah, or something. Just on all fours. Yeah, it's it's they, it's Hogger. They gave him Hogger. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then also in the new box comes, uh, like we alluded to before, kind of a, a point five update, sort of. It just basically has all the FAQs and the and stuff that had come in the last three years, four years since the new rulebook came out. Um, which some people were kind of eyeing a, a, a new new rule set with this new box. Uh, but to be honest, I haven't heard anything negative about this rule set. There, there was some releases that people were dying for new updated rules, but for the most part, I think this rule set kind of nails it, and I hear that from a lot of players. So I'm yeah, super happy yeah. they haven't changed it, at, like pretty much at all. But rather, other yeah. than the FAQs, but yeah, that's uh, from what I know. Is playing now. Uh, I haven't played in a, a Pacific tournament as well as in Warcry and 40k. Whereas in Warcry and 40k, there's been a lot of comments on, like, I wish they changed just the next rules edition, or, like, I can't wait for the next edition to hopefully mm-hmm. they fix this. With 40k, that being just the general pacing of how slow and bloated the game feels now. Uh, Warcry, the aforementioned, uh, getting warcry by the game itself. We're like, well, I draw four cards, and it's not played into my team's specific strength, so I'll see you in the next 30 minutes, and maybe right. I can get something done. Yeah. Whereas uh, playing uh, Mississippi, um uh, I've heard some people say like, you know, I was like, I don't like how this plays out this model, but I can build around it some other way. Like, mm-hmm. no one really seems to have any like hard stickling points where they're like, oh, I can't wait for a new edition to actually address this like thing and stop me from enjoying the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think a lot of that is due to the like the the fact that it, a lot of how a certain army plays is really just down on the person playing them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's all about your generals, how you how you're moving them around and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's very yeah. Uh, a very general focus. Like, uh, you could play the most top meta army that there is, even though in in Middle Earth there's not really meta. I mean, there's there's armies that are stronger, but yeah. you could win tournaments with any list, it's just Amar. about. You know. Yeah, and a- Amar's pretty much top always, but. <laughs> yeah. Um. But if you're playing everything right, and you're playing the objective, and you're, I don't know, it sounds really stupid, but you're rolling your sixes, you know, you can, you could win any match. Um, there are people yeah. that win with Minas Tirith all the time, and people think yep. Minas Tirith is just nothing but a, a group of tin cans running around. Um, yeah, well, um, playing Minas Tirith and the tournament that we last played in, um, I, uh, my first game was against the guy who eventually ended up winning the whole thing, mm-hmm. uh, running uh, Black Corsairs, which are very strong very annoying just the constant throwing poison weapons yeah uh but i nearly uh ran away with it by uh just maneuvering board near my cab in to grab the objective and slingshot out as my forces was breaking which if it got off i would have ended the game with an objective while he was still tied by my my blob yeah uh, of lineman but your immovable uh, massive blob yes Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way, but uh, 
you know, there was nearly a moment where just due to maneuvering, I was almost able to mm-hmm. sneak one out. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, all that to say, yeah, th- this rule set, I mean, obviously we talk about this a lot, Middle Earth and play Middle Earth a lot on this channel, so it's my favorite by far. Um, I'm, I'm starting to love Warcry a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, but I'm, I, you know, it, it, we didn't change, so, which is awesome. Uh, also, last thing in that box, the uh, new terrain, which uh, is super cool. It's new uh, Asgiliath um, uh, modular terrain, so you can build it in lots yeah. and lots of different ways. Yeah, and, I didn't and, realize it was modular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the guys in the stream said that it's going to be uh, akin to the Rohan houses, so there's going to be lots and lots of different ways that you can build it up, and if you get multiple oh, sets, snap. yeah, if you get multiple sets, you can kind of build huge terrains or you know huge buildings i mean or like make a couple of small ones you know whatever the case but yeah uh along with along with that they announced uh battle hosts uh which are basically mini armies in a box uh from the releases it looks like they're probably about 500 ish points or so so i I mean it's it's enough to no probably less than that because it's only one hero so it's probably uh, not all of them. The uh, Isengard has some on Grima. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. Grima's a. I guess you can count him as a hero, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, the yeah, it's probably yeah. be- four hundred ish, somewhere yeah. there between three and five. It's, um, it's enough that you can have like your first game, and then also get started collecting yeah. for like an actual like full size game. Yeah, like, actually getting a good a good starter set, which they've done for Age of Sigmar and Forty K. Forever, so yep. finally doing that for Lord of the Rings. Yep, and we got four different factions: there's Rohan, Isengard, uh, Gondor, and Mordor. Um, all of them come with the awesome new plastic heroes for each one of those factions. Uh, like the mo- I think it's the most recent plastic for all of them. Uh, so Gandalf comes with Gondor uh, alongside with Pippin, and then Saruman and Grimma come with Isengard. Uh, the new Witch King model comes in. Um, Mordor and then Aomer comes with Rohan and it's fantastic I mean finally having uh, a starter army you know or like a getting started thing is is so awesome especially for new players Um, being able to just pick something up and say okay I'm going to build this and let's go play a game instead of having to buy a hero and then buy another hero and then buy this group of infantry and then buy that group of infantry and then maybe we'll get a game in in a couple months like you'll be able to just Buy it, put them together, and start playing. Start the process. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which, along with that, hopefully that means they're going to start doing one for every army, which would be super cool, because uh, all of us here love playing every single army, so it would just make it easier for us to buy them all. <laughs> yeah, probably depends on the so. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But maybe dwarves will become less expensive to get started <laughs> Watch that be the most expensive yeah. box I come out with. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing as like you just think that. So. I think they'll probably keep it to only the armies where you could get a whole starter set in plastic. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that yeah. makes sense for now, probably. Um, which has been kind of the biggest gripe that I've seen out of all of this is that. Yes, it's cool that they're all coming together, but the all the infantry models are twenty plus years old. You know they've they've oh, been. Geez, what's people that? Are cry it's, people are crybabies. Oh That's yeah, all. yeah, they are. But I mean, there's some things that I kind of agree with. Like maybe Minister should get a little revamp. Um, I don't. Mm. It's hard because their their models are super easy. They're simple. Uh, but yeah. they all look exactly the same. And so having a little bit of variation would be kind of cool. Um, we're still going to get them and still going to play them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But um, Yeah, true. Yeah, at, at least the heroes have got some really, really, really nice-looking models now. Um, yeah. But unfortunately it falls into, I think that a lot of you were early learning players running the same issue that 43 players deal with, which is uh, knit list priority. Mm-hmm. And that whoever has the best net list gets the the newest models. Right. Uh, Red Corsair is still fairly recent in terms of everything like altogether, but because they had a really strong like some dudes put together a strong net list that did well this recent year, we're getting whole new sets, corn berserkers. Right. 
Right. Which, I mean, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about. With Lord of the Rings, there's not really a net list. I mean, you can... Mm-hmm. Like I said, I took an, no. an eight-model army to a tournament, and I I think I ended up getting, like, fourth or something like that. So... Yeah. Hey, nobody ever does that, you know? That's that's unheard of, like, cause, because it's not... It's not a net list. Or it's, yeah, it's not meta, so why would you do that? But it was actually a lot more fun to play that way than it was to take Angmar and just wreck people with the Witch King. <laughs> um, so let's see after the battle host boxes uh, then the, all the swaths of, of elves started coming out um, which I didn't really plan on building any elf army I mean I started doing the last alliance I want you now. what's that? I want you now oh yeah 100% um, we, we planned on doing a last alliance army and we have pretty much everything we need for it but after seeing those models holy crap i think i have to work those guys into the last lance army <laughs> uh, yeah elrond and the banner bear are dope oh, the banner bear is so awesome um which they're releasing this weekend uh for pre-order and i think the galadrim court the guards of the galadrim court are releasing too i didn't see if glorfindel was coming out or not uh but that has got to be the best looking model in the game now. Like it's so good. I hands down, it has to it, be. I don't know what else can even come close to that right now. <laughs> is he in the no. too, or is he later? I can't remember. He is right. Yes. Well, when they release, so sorry, I'm just reading through their release statements on that right now. The Gladwin Court and Glorfindel are together in the same post along with Rumil and Orofin. So maybe they're all coming out this weekend because I know Rumil and Orofin are coming out this weekend and Elrond. They're all, they're all Forge World. Elrond isn't, but the other guys are. Actually, but just kind of a lore nerd moment. I just had to make sure I fact check myself. Technically, Glorfindel could be any time period because he's been around since the first stage. Yeah. Yeah, I just can't remember if the yeah. uh, this model that if this model is a last alliance or uh I guess it could be kind of look like it, but I it kind of looks like, but also I feel like it's kind of intentionally vague because it, at least in the movies when the elves uh come to um Helm's Deep, their armor is adjacent ish to the last alliance armor. Like adjacent, just kind of somewhere. Yeah, that's close. Right. Yeah, I didn't see where the new this, is, this is a different wash on the breastplate. <laughs> but also, that was a different uh, host of elves that were in Last Alliance too. So yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, like Tim said, Glorfindel, he was around for all three ages. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. So you yeah, can, you can use he, him he, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. He died in the fall of Gondolan, and then the um, uh, was it the Istari or the Ashari? And the rest were like. Uh, we got you, you could go do more work. Yeah, you're not you're not done. Okay. I can't remember. I can't remember <laughs> yeah. if he's one of the dudes in the I know the army list. Like if you take certain people from the last alliance list, you can't take other other heroes. You know. I, yeah, I like know. That. I know Gilgalad's got that rule. Yeah, deeply bad. Because he he ended up dying in the War of the Last Alliance. And so, yeah. rules-wise, they made it so you couldn't take him and some other people. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Glorfindel. Nope, he has another rule. But, Gilgalads. If your force contains Gilgalad and, and either Arwen, Eladin, and Elrond here, Lindon, or excuse me, Lindor, or Bilbo, then it will automatically lose its army, army bonus. Additionally, the force will automatically be impossible allies with every other army, uh, regardless of what alliance it would normally be. So, okay, so you can include Glorfindel. Yeah, you can. You, you can still want. take I was, Glorfindel. I was thinking of doing him and. Uh, Hugo leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Hugo leaving. <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's Hugo leaving and Vigo Mortensen. <laughs> Mister Frodo. Um, <laughs> honestly, I would probably take Gilgalad still over him. 
I mean, I know you're kind of paying. You're world. paying for it in points because really? Glorfindel is one forty five, Gilgalad's one seventy, but you're also getting basically somebody who'll never lose a fight in Gilgalad. He's got fight nine, and he has so many different reroll abilities. Wait, is it fast? No, he doesn't have the fast 12-inch horse, no. But he can still get a horse. Um, yes. Plus, uh, I, I don't ever know how to say this. I, I glos, a glos, his spear is phenomenal. I, I use, hop. I, no. <laughs> I hop. Uh, I used it in a match uh, a couple months ago or last month, and it it, it, it destroys. You're, you're pretty much guaranteeing a wound on anything, no matter what it is. It's super, super awesome. Um, but anyways, we're getting off track here. Uh, new models, fantastic. Uh, thoughts, Boone, tell me. New models, fantastic, except for <laughs> Glad and Port Fuse. Yeah, I was kind of let down by those guys they're, too. They're, I don't think they're that cool. They're I, uh, the printing on the banner. <laughs> well, that's neat. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's neat. That's neat. Uh, everything else is subpar. But it kind of stopped like one of those things where like it's like. We want to charge more the first box. Uh, what if we just change the posing on some existing old models? <laughs> Hold them new. Detail is technically better, but I just like the look of the old ones. Uh, yeah, mm. I heard some people say that their heads are too small. Like, the proportions are just off on the new <laughs> yeah. ones. I don't know. The old ones, I think, do look better. Uh, I think I think some of, them, some of the stuff from some of the new ones, I might... Not like because of just maybe the paint job. Yeah, yeah I just need to see in person. Like uh, like Elrond's horse, maybe maybe the the horse's knees just are painted weird. So you know, it could just be the shading doing some weird effects, but it <laughs> straight up looks like it's just like hard sculpted, like like not even cast yeah. plastic. It looks like Mega Bloks plastic. <laughs> even some uh, it really some does. of the um, like I don't know. I just like Faramir. There's parts of him where I was like, that looks kind of weird, but I his, think in person it'd be better. His, yeah, his face, his and Elrond's face to me look a little. Yeah. Elrond's mm. face is too narrow and his face is a little too round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he kind of got ch- chubby oh, face. Oh. Overall, at first I was kind of underwhelmed, but because I feel like they hyped the Bajilis out of it. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, oh, yeah, this is cool, I guess. Neat. But then I looked at it from the perspective of a new player, and I was like, "Oh, this yeah. is actually pretty sweet." Yeah, yeah, exactly. It means, like, especially like the battle hosts and stuff. It means the game's healthy, so yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. And, and mm, that's a good way to look at it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it. I think it definitely is for newer players, and a lot of people lost sight of that, and just saw it as. I already have all these models. I don't need another uh, starter box with. 24 more Moran and Oryx. Like, well, yeah, maybe you don't, but Jim yeah. over here, he probably hasn't played, but this looks really cool to him. So, I, I don't know. I, I think looking at it from a different point of view is going to help a lot of people. Um, and then yeah. you also have people that say, like, yeah, the starter box is really cool, but then it was just elves after that. And I think this is just the first wave of a lot of stuff that's to come. Right. Um, yeah, like, starting with... Um... I don't know, like they, with Pelinor, they had the new say it in and blah, blah, blah. Then they mm-hmm. kind of just progressively started releasing more and more new stuff. I think it's going to flood, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And with Pelinor came two, two source books right after that. And they had the war in Rohan and Gondor at war. And those were probably directly correlated from the starter box of, of Pelinor. So, yeah. and people will think that there's a last Alliance one coming, which would be pretty sick. Yeah. Actually, after this, it would make sense if we did like a um, uh, Last Alliance, and then also a like you could half can, and it means some of the other books are half can, but do like a campaign from the Black Gates into Mordor. Right. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of possibilities, and I think just getting a dedicated stream to Middle Earth is huge for the game because that means that yeah. they're finally realizing like this is still a game that's being played worldwide, and it's so super popular. Um, why not tap into it a little bit more and try to get on the hype, which is Rings of Power. Whether it's good or bad hype, it's still hype regardless. So mm-hmm. bringing in new players for this, seeing if it has some sort of traction, and then it's just going to progressively get better and better and better as it goes on in the next 
year and a half, two years. Um, yeah. Because I know Rings of Power has already has like th- two, three seasons mapped out or something like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so even if they don't get rights for Rings of Power, which I don't think they will, and probably better that they don't, doesn't mean that they can't <clears throat> bring out new stuff for The Last Alliance or new stuff for Lothlorien Elves or, you know, whatever the case is. So I, I think it's a really good thing. Um, and battle host boxes are something that we saw way, way long ago, uh, shortly after the movies, the original trilogy came out. Um Every once in a while, I'll see them pop up on Facebook groups or something where it's like, uh, oh, what's it called? The the host of the evil or host of the hand or something like that, where it comes with a ridiculous amount of troops. It's something that we, mm-hmm. we've seen before, but it's never been boxed like this for, you know, newer players. So yeah. I, think it's, I think it's great. I think it's really, really good that we got all this stuff. Yeah. Agree, agree, agree. Um, I think that was kind of it, big news wise. Yep. For the last they little announced, bit. So they announced a new tank and dreadnought for Horse Heresy Second Edition, which I think everyone's gonna like. Not needed, but okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> which, by the way, has Horse Heresy taken off like everybody thought I was going to? I haven't really heard much about it since the release of Horse Heresy. Uh, well, I know it sold a bit. I think people, I think the casual audience is still assembling and painting at this point. Uh, Boone and I need to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you think so. uh, but uh, I think when you get into Grand Tournament season late this year, next year, that's when I'll really get the test to see how much it's being played. Mm. At least with like know, easily trackable metrics. Going off of youtube engagement i know there's been some like big videos about heresy but i know uh watching some of sorbs rope streams him and broadsword have like that big yeah, a big campaign heresy campaign but they are pushing out releases in between episodes way further out now because they're bombing they're not doing good at all yeah i heard, I heard that about Zorp Zorp. In it might not be great yeah, yeah i feel like i feel like i feel like engagement is tapered off in general so hopefully there is some interest there, but yeah, interest may have gone once it actually got released. And I don't know if it's a rules thing because the rules actually look very good. Yeah, um, they do. But I don't know if it's just the the fact maybe GW cannibalizing it by going back into pushing 40k immediately afterwards. Right. Well, the rule set for Heresy is an older edition of 40k, right? Essentially. Uh, y- y- yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty close <laughs> to like sixth edition, seventh edition, forty k. Okay. Uh, using blast radius and that. Um, a lot more infantry focus. Um, and you actually have to use like measurement tools for like blast radius instead of just using the. If it's being model, if the unit is this big, it does damage this many models. If it is this big, it does damage this many mm. models. So you have to like see how many models you can fit in the radius. Gotcha. Um, but they included reactions. And with how well reactions received in uh, um, Heresy, it makes sense that they were also not being included in Warcry. Right. And probably be developed around the same time, but uh, they probably wasn't testing there because Heresy has been in production a little bit longer, I feel like, as far as the rule set goes. Yeah, probably. Uh, but, um, yeah, and um, it's not, you know, it, the thing is that it's not as competitive as 40K, but it lends itself to a much more casual and, like, beer and pretzel gaming experience right uh but uh unfortunately i think the the track hard sweats have cannibalized a lot of 40k audience so uh by gw then going back and pushing new corn models and everything immediately after releasing this they might have cannibalized some of the audience that might have been swayed into a more fun ex- played back experience right more fun imo i just heard yeah. some i can't remember which youtubers it was but basically they're saying <coughs> Excuse me. They were super excited for Heresy to come out because they love the way the models look and everything. But they said something to the extent of, "I've already played Warhammer Six Edition. I don't want to go back and play it again," or something like that. So, I don't know if yeah. that's kind of the general feeling with a lot of people, or if that was just a, a one-off from a few people or something. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think for some people who want the the, the hyper-competitive experience, that's kind of the, the shared sentiment is they don't want to have 
things that force it to play more narratively as opposed to more competitively. Right. But for you know, uh, boomer gamers, they like the idea of that having the more narrative <laughs> boomer gamers. Uh, experience. Okay, boomer. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Um, do you guys have anything else to to chat about while we're while we're here? I think that pretty much covers everything we want to talk about. That's all the news I have. Pretty good summary, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff recently. So much cool. good stuff. Super exciting. Yeah, and hopefully, so a lot, much. hopefully, a lot more better things to come too. Um, I know us as a channel, we've got some really cool things in the pipeline. Um, we've got a Ballin's Tomb scenario that's going to be filmed and coming out here pretty soon. Uh, we just got some terrain in from Omega Terrain. Uh, we're going to feature that in one of our battle reports. Um, we're going to homebrew a whole scenario and everything for it, and we're going to make a really, really cool video out of that. Um, we've got some minis that are coming in from uh, one of our buddies who's painting up a lot of stuff for us. This should be here any day. Super excited to see all that stuff. Uh, bringing more painted minis. Wait to see it. Yeah, yeah. Bringing more painted minis on screen is always better. So, um, yep. we've got that coming. We're gonna, <laughs> so is, we're gonna do so some. So says everybody in our channel. Yeah, I yes. know. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do some <laughs> Warcry <laughs> stuff. Uh, we actually got a studio that's in the process of being built and just about finished up. So almost done. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> thanks, Derek. <laughs> so lot, lots of lots of cool things coming. Um, We've been a little. Antares. What? Yeah. Just, just another, another game. Tim and I impulsively split. Oh oh, yeah. (laughs) Tim's got it right there. (laughs) Yeah, he's got it right there, and included a hardcover book. In the box. (laughs) GW. Oh my gosh, there's so many things. More models for like a third the price. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That's out of Warlord, right? Let's make that. It's yeah. Warlord. Yeah, yeah. yeah they've it's, got uh, Warlord. They've got some great looking minis. Yes. Yeah, we've got. I mean, I, fun. We've, we've got mainly Lord of the Rings and Warcry probably for the near future, but we have yeah. a lot of yeah other things we yeah. want to bring yep. to like that and bolt action and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Marvel. Marvel. And Marvel. Yeah, we're, we're gonna have a lot more hobby uh, focused or hobby centered videos as well. Uh, Boone and Tim are going to work on uh, an unboxing video and maybe even some painting videos. I'm going to start streaming over at uh, twitch.tv slash tabletop collect or the tabletop collective. Um, I'm just going to start streaming all of my painting sessions. Um, I've got this set up right here, right beside me. And I kind of gave it a test go yesterday, yesterday, day before yesterday. So everything's kind of set up, ready to go. So we're going to start doing that. Um, Come hang out with me. Feel free. I'll probably do it most nights every other night so um yeah lots of stuff um last few weeks have been kind of quiet from us but such is summer uh everybody's super, super busy. <laughs> a lot in progress too yeah, yeah. Um, a lot in progress so um hit that subscribe button hit the like button um message us love us <laughs> please no i'm not i won't bake. i won't bake. <laughs> um Oh, also, I forgot. I totally forgot. Uh, it was kind of um, on the lowdown, but we got some dice in with our logos. And so we're going to be doing a giveaway with those here pretty soon. Um, patrons are going to be able to have access to those as well. So I think uh, probably here in the next couple of months when we get some patrons signed up uh, to which ones they want, we're going to ship out some dice to everybody. Uh, just little mini packs of dice, but they are awesome. So... We've got lots of things coming, so join and us. And as, as demonstrated in a Lord of video that may be somewhere sometime, uh, they're loaded. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sixes all day long from those things. <laughs> well, if you ever want to see a line of basic troops hold off a great beast with Gargoyle? Oh my gosh, yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for joining. Like I said, feel free to follow us, hit the subscribe, message us, comment. We'll, we'll get back to you guys. Peace.